now we are at the main presentation once again welcome everyone to today's webinar on bs8539 standard and pullout test requirements what you need to know and what are the challenges what are the uh, factors everything we would try to answer as much as possible regarding pullout testing or on site testing of anchors as we know anchor is a very small product but a very critical product a very safety relevant product so it's very important that we take care of how to design how to select and how to test these products let me introduce myself my name is tino thomas i am technical manager in fisher in uae i would be available in the user id fisher mea this would be the time split for today's session we would start the webinar now we hope that the webinar would uh, go on till 11:45 that's 45 minutes followed by which we would have a question and answer session for 10 minutes that's from 11:45 am till 11:55 and then followed by poll and feedback session for 5 minutes your feedback is very important to us so we really value that you value that you take this 5 minutes for us so that we can improve your webinar experiences next time few uh, advice from our side for better experience please use google chrome or firefox uh, kindly try to avoid using internet explorer please do not do any parallel downloads because it might affect your buffering please we wish to answer all your questions so we kindly request that if you have any questions please keep it towards the end and we would answer all your questions at the end we would also show you where exactly you can post your questions so that it does not get lost in the chat screen and of course the good news is that we also have some gifts for some questions which we asked for the correct answers so i believe you would have a screen similar to what you see now so the first thing is to make it full screen so you can have better visual quality and you can have better uh, viewing second if you face any problems or if you have any uh, uh, any issues you can post it in the chat screen and our support staff would get in touch with you and we would try as much as possible to rectify all your problems secondly as i said your questions are very important for us we wish to answer each one of those if you post it in the chat by the end of the session maybe we have a lot of chat uh, chats happening and maybe we lose your question in between so kindly go to the chat tab and post your questions there we assure that we would answer all your questions by the end of the session and last but not least we cannot improve your, uh, ourselves and the webinars without getting your feedback so there is also a tab for polls on the right side so please give us your honest feedback under the polls so once again we are now at the main webinar we would start it now the topic what we have today is on site testing of anchors and what really you need to know the agenda is split based on this why you should attend factors causing anchor failures types of anchor failures importance of on site testing of anchors challenges faced in on site testing of anchors british standard bs8539 this is the icing on the cake and then determination of anchor capacity from on site testing and why choose fisher first of all why should you attend this webinar or why is it important because fixings do fail there's history of many fixing failures some of which has caused 
injury to property and death. So we don't want any of these to happen in any of our sites, any of our customers. So we really take care of the safety of the product. As you can see, there are certain failure examples. On your right side, what you see is a school where a duct fell on top of children who were studying and four of them were injured. And on the left side is a scaffold fixed with improper anchors, which resulted in huge failure and loss of property. So if you wish that this does not happen to any site where you are involved, you should attend this webinar. Main factors why we have failure on anchors. Anchors in incorrectly selected. Anchors incorrectly installed. Now, let me remind that 80% of the time anchors fail because of the second reason. Anchors are chosen properly but incorrectly installed. The third hidden factor is sometimes during the course of the project, specification change without a proper procedure. So this is also resulting sometimes in anchor failure. Maybe the design considerations changed, maybe the uh, environmental conditions changed or so forth. So this might also be a cause of anchor failure. Now today, we would discuss primarily the first two topics, which is anchors incorrectly selected and anchors incorrectly installed. What is BS8539? Have you all heard of BS8539? Or this is the first time? Or when you received a flyer from our staff, staff for the invite, was it the first time? OK. Now, BS8539 is a renowned code which covers the correct aspect of fixings anchors drilled into concrete also drilled into masonry for safety critical applications it is one of the best quotes which states everything about selection of anchors installation of anchors testing of anchors and certification of anchors now guess what we would be covering today yes testing of anchors so we we would go in detail of what are the main factors, main guidelines as per this code, which is pertaining to testing of anchors. Of course, we can also give you some consultation of selection of anchors, installation of anchors, as well as certification. But let the, let's keep that for another session. Or please feel to contact Fisher representative at your uh, uh, countries so we can get back to you in detail with more uh, details. What is a pullout test? Let me ask you this question. How many of you have seen a real pullout test or at least a video of a pullout test? OK, that's good to know. So we have some experience within today's session. That's really a good, a good thing to have. Now let me show you a pullout test. Here you can see a test apparatus. You can see the bottom part, the anchor, is connected to a jack. And then we are using a hydraulic equipment to pull the anchor out. There is also a device to, to monitor the displacement of the anchor, what you see here on the top. This is a state-of-the-art pullout test, what we have done in Baraka nuclear power plant in UAE, where the requirements for pullout test are far more stringent than most of our common sites. So now we are doing this test to see what is the performance of the anchor in this particular concrete. Okay, now you can see my colleague, he's applying the load, no failure which means the anchor is strong enough to carry the load so far. OK, now, if you notice clearly, you can see some cracks. 
happening on the back side. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. We can see that the anchor is still taking load. It has not failed completely. And unless which it comes out. So now it has almost come out. Okay, let me ask you, what did you see in this test? What happened at the end of the test? Okay. Okay, that brings me to the topic of failure modes witnessed in anchors. While we do any pullout test, you see certain failure modes. So let's see the first and important failure mode, which is a steel failure. So when the anchor is subjected to a load with more load than the steel capacity itself, then the steel just breaks off. So on your left side, you can see an actual anchor experiencing steel failure. You can see the anchor is split into two parts. So this is called steel failure. So if you have steel failure uh, and you want higher loads, the only option for you is either to choose a higher grade of steel or choose a bigger diameter. Let's say what you see in this example is a M10 anchor. You might, uh, you might have to go with an M12 or an M16, depends on your load requirements. The second important failure is called anchor pullout failure. It is actually called anchor pullout and concrete combined failure. What you see on the left side is how it looks like. The anchor comes out with, with certain uh, cone shape on the, uh, on the concrete. Now, this is because we are applying more load than the anchor mechanism can take. Now, you might have heard of mechanical anchors. You might have heard of chemical anchors. You might have heard of nylon anchors. So any mechanism which it works on, if you apply more load than it is designed to, it fails. Another reason for pullout failure could be incorrect installation. For example, you were testing a chemical anchor and you didn't clean the hole properly. That brings you to an early pullout failure. You see, accidents can happen. And here is one of those steel columns where you have high moment and the anchors have come out experiencing pullout failure. The next failure is called concrete cone failure. Now, I don't have to explain everything. The name says it all. The anchor comes out in the shape of a cone. And this is where you have, it, there could be two reasons for this failure. Either you have a very shallow embedment that inside concrete, your anchor is very less gone inside concrete, or the concrete itself is weak. This could cause concrete cone failure. Another uh, failure, or the last one, rather, is splitting failure. So now, from this picture, you can see the base material. It could be concrete, it could be blocks. When you apply the load, the base material cracks. So this is mainly when you have less member thickness. For example, uh, I have seen this when I was testing in concrete, which was only 90 mm thick. I have also seen this happening when I was testing it in AAC blocks, where the base material is very weak. And when the anchor is getting installed, it was an expansion anchor. So the expansion anchor could not be resisted by the block itself. So this is when you have weaker or thinner base material, you would see this failure. Another example is something like this, a splitting failure happening towards the edge. We'll dive a little bit detail into anchor testing standards as per BS8539. Now, what you would learn about pullout tests today, as I'm happily, I saw that many of you are experienced in pullout tests. You have seen certain pullout tests. So, but still, there, there could be some gray area 
where you, you, you might be wondering what could be the solution. So here, how many specimens should you be tested? Normally in a site, how many tests have you conducted when you want to test an anchor? Let's say you choose a Fisher anchor. Let me give an example, FAZ M10, and you call Fisher representative to do the test. How many tests will you ask them to do? Okay. Okay, let's move on. What is the load to be applied on the anchor? Now, generally, when you ask for a pullout test, do you always ask them to do for a failure load? Or is there any particular load value which you want to see from this anchor? What is the normal procedure? What do you do normally? Okay, let's let's see. How long? Now, uh, engineer Umer had uh, given a, a reply that he tests three on an average. Okay, let's see if three is really enough or three is more than enough. And how long the load should be applied to the anchor? What is it? What is the normal procedure normally? Okay. Do you often test the load and then release it immediately after you reach the required load? Okay, Mr. Parag had said 20 seconds. Okay. We will all answer, don't worry, we will answer all of these towards the end, but just be patient. So when you do a pullout test, mainly there are two types. You can do a destructive test, as you can see on the left side of my screen, where the anchor is being pulled out till some failure happens. It could be a steel failure, it could be a pullout failure, or a concrete cone failure, any failure, but there should be a failure. You should see with your naked eye some failure. The second method is a non-destructive test. Non-destructive test is done to prove some values. You want to see if this anchor works for certain load values, but you really don't want to wish to see any failures happening. So these are the two test procedures normally available. Let's see further details. Let me ask you another thing. What is the main purpose why you request an on-site pullout test? Is it to know that your anchor has been installed properly? Is it to find out that the anchor really has got the quality to take the load? Or is it really you want to find out, you don't know what is the load and you want to find out what exactly is, is your purpose? Okay, there are only two purposes for you to do a pullout test. One is to determine resistance. By resistance, from here forth, we refer to as anchor capacity. So determining resistance means determining the anchor capacity. So the first reason why you would do a pullout test is you want to you wish to find out the anchor capacity. It could be a non-approved anchor, it could be a non-approved base material, and you wish to find out what how much this anchor can really carry. The second purpose is you want to verify the installation quality. As I said in the initial slides, installation safety is the prime cause for any anchor failure. So if you don't trust uh, the inst installer or if you don't uh, if you say that there is there could be something wrong which happened during the installation time and you want to do a test that is the second purpose so again only two purpose for do, you to do a pullout test the first one is to determine the capacity and the second one is to determine the quality of workmanship types of on-site tests so again coming back to my Summarizing from my previous slide, there is destructive test to determine capacity, which is based on BS 8539 NX B.2.3.2. And then to determine resistance or capacity, you have non-destructive option, 
as per BS 8539 NXB 2.3.1. Now to verify installation quality, you don't necessarily go for a destructive test. You can go for a non-destructive test. And if the test is passing, then you can trust your installation. If not, we will see how to handle these things in the coming slides. We require some basic information before we go for on-site test. Now, the sad reality is sometimes we receive some phone calls requesting for a pullout test without proper information. So this really is not an effective pullout test. To do a pullout test, we primarily should know what is the base material. Is it masonry? Is it uh, concrete is it non-standard masonry for example some masonry which is not covered in any approvals and then we also need to know what is the anchor you are using at site so we have to carry necessary equipments and we have different safety factors for different type of equipments uh, sorry anchors so if you have nylon we have different safety factors so the test we should do is for a different load value. We will see that in the coming slides. So based on anchor type and ba based on base material, these are two primary informations we should have in hand before we proceed to any pullout test. And of course, what is the purpose of this pullout test? Is it to prove workmanship or you want to find the capacity? How to determine anchor resistance based on destructive test method? I I would like to warn you that we would go a little bit technical into formulas. Please be with us. We would also do some real life examples. So you, you would also learn with us. BS8539 NXB 2.3.2 states the requirements for destructive tests. Number of test specimens you must use for this purpose is from five to 15. The characteristic resistance of the anchor is calculated based on this formula where NRUM, that is tension resistance ultimate or the mean value of all the ultimate tests. So if you test five anchors, let's say, you, you might get slightly different results. You take a fair average of all these five results and you calculate the NRUM. KN is the tolerance factor. It is also based on number of tests performed. And then standard deviation. And then we have a coefficient for variation. So we don't like to see one anchor giving you one kilonewton and the next anchor giving you 10 kilonewton because then there is something wrong. There is a huge standard deviation which is not advisable. So we try to cater, uh, try to consider all these parameters and then calculate the result. So in the end, after you use all these factors to calculate the uh, NRK, which is a characteristic resistance, you divide it by a safety factor called V. And this safety factor is based on what is the material of anchor you use. For example, V is 2.5 for any metal or chemical anchors, and V is 5 for all nylon anchors. So nylon, as you know, is slightly soft material, though we have stronger nylon plugs in our range, but normally the coat is very stringent with nylon anchors, so you have a safety factor of 5 for nylon anchors. And then you can see in this formula another factor called omega. So omega is further uh, factors you can add based on your site conditions. If you feel that you are doing a test in a wet area, then these are omega is basically reduction factors. You can reduce the capacity of the anchor based on adverse conditions you have at site. So let's do a real case example. So now 
we have tested Fisher Anchor SXR 8 into 60 FUS A4. Now, how many tests did I say as per the code we need to test minimum? Okay, anyhow, I have it in the screen already and thank you for the reply. We need to test minimum five up to 15. So it's between five and 15. So now we have tested five anchors of this sort and we have got different failure loads, what you see here. Let me read it one by one, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Very good, we got a standard uh, result. And then the second two, we got slightly higher, 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. Now, we take an average value of this. It's simple mathematics. We add all the value and divide it by five. So you get 0 0.74 kilonewton. That's your mean ultimate value, average value of failure. Now, you have to calculate coefficient of variation and then tolerance factor. So tolerance factor, we have taken 3.4. Now, this is based on how many number of tests you have done. So if it was five, then your tolerance factor is 3.4. If it was 10, your tolerance factor would be 2.57. And if it was 15, your tolerance factor would be 2.33. And what we do is we also calculate the standard deviation between all these values. As you can see, the deviation in values or the variation in the result is very minute. So the standard deviation, what we got was 0 0.05. Now, to calculate V, we divide the standard deviation, which is 0 0.05, by the NRUM, which is the mean ultimate result. And then you get S by NRUM. And then adjustment factor based on condition pertaining to the application. In this case, we didn't take, uh, we considered 0.9 as omega because it was for long time uh, loading. So applying all these results to this formula, you would get a result of 0.496 kilonewton. And let me remind you, this is characteristic. You have to divide it by a safety factor to calculate the design value. If you have any questions on this calculation, post your questions to the questions tab. We will definitely get back to you on this. I know it's a lot of formulas, a lot of factors, but we are, we are confident that we can, we can all learn together. Now, how to determine anchor resistance using a non-destructive test method. Now imagine you have installed an application. It's already there inside, the anchors are installed. But for some reason, you didn't do a calculation. Okay, now you don't want to test the anchors till failure because these are real applications and you want to use this anchors earlier uh, in the future. So you would consider a non-destructive test method. So again, the number of test specimens you should be testing should be between five and 15. So what load are you going to test? You, for this test, you should determine or you must understand clearly what load are you looking for? So let's take an example. I am looking for a load of one kilonewton I expect that the anchor should carry a load of one kilonewton and I have already installed these anchors, thousands of these anchors. So I've, I've decided that I would do five random testing, one kilonewton. So my NSK is one and we test, we will see what is V test. So N test is the load we are applying and NSK is what is your requirement? NSK is your non-factored load requirement. Let me uh, give you an example. You want to hang a chandelier, 100 kilograms. So your NSK for one anchor is 100 kilograms or one kilonewton. And V test is purely based on what is the anchor 
which you're going to use. If you're going to use a nylon anchor, your V test would be five. Any other anchors like metal or chemical, you can use V test three. And if you have temporary fixings, like you're fixing a scaffolding, then you have little uh, leniency on the V test values. So in our example, if you want to test a chandelier weighing 100 kilograms using a hook and one anchor, so your NSK is one kilonewton. And imagine if you are using a metal anchor, a through bolt or an expansion bolt, your V test value would be three. If you were using a nylon anchor, your V test value would be five. I hope this is a little more clear and a little more easy compared to the previous method. At the end of the test, since we are not testing the still failure, we uh, recommend to, or the code says, you need to leave the load applied on the anchor for a time of one minute. So, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember who replied, uh, 20 seconds. It's not a bad reply, uh, but the requirements says you should apply the load if you're using this method to determine the capacity, you should leave the load for a period of one minute, 60 seconds completely, don't release the load, because sometimes you might also face this when you're inviting some third party test laboratories. They might just come, apply the load, you, you might be asking them to test for 20 kilonewton, they reach 20 kilonewton, immediately release the load. But as per standard, leave it for one complete minute. <clears throat> now, if you got the required value in all five tests, so it can be assumed that the application is safe. So your capacity is at par with the design requirement. You can also measure displacement in the same method. If you don't want your anchors to come out and you apply this particular load, you can also measure the displacement. So you can apply the load and then measure the displacement, but you need to have specific equipment, which is not common normally. But when we have anchors tested, let's say for as per ETA standards, European Technical Authority standards, we have to measure displacement and these information is me uh, mentioned in all our approval copies. If suppose, God forbid, one test result was less than what you require out of five, then the client or uh, we have several options. The first option is the easiest one. You select a different kind of fastener with higher expected resistance, which is not possible, of, of course, if you have uh, already installed your applications. Or use the same fastener, but a larger diameter. Instead of M10, you can go with an M12. Use the same anchor with a higher embedment depth, Continue the test and determine the resistance. Now, if you have already installed all your fasteners uh, and you're doing this test and you feel that the load values are less, then you have an option to test all the fasteners and you calculate what is the capacity based on actual site scenario and then you work backwards. So the failure load should always be at least greater than 80% of the test loads. This is the minimum requirement. And now we are, this option to continue the test and determine the resistance is valid only if just one anchor fail, not more. Let's see a real time case study. In this case study, I would not do any exercise. You would do the exercise and you would tell me what is the capacity. So let's check your knowledge. I have a contractor. It's called ABC Contracting. It's one of the biggest firms in Middle East. 
they are fixing an application of cladding runners and they made a good choice of selecting Fisher on the first place and one of the best products SXRL 10 by 100 which is a nylon anchor well known in the facade industry and then they have a base material which is called solid brick. Now as per their estimation or calculations they require a working load of 0.2 kilonewton. This is non-factor load. Now my question to you, how many number of anchors do you think shall you be testing? Since you are already experts, I'm sure you can answer this question. Okay, the first, we would consider the first right answers. Okay, Mr. Mohammed, five. Okay. How much load do you think shall you be testing? Now, I would remind you one thing. They want to do a non-destructive load testing. Oh, wow. I'm excited to see a lot of results. Five, 10, five to 15, wow, 10. That's, I get the satisfaction that you, you have been uh, be very studious to the uh, webinar. You've been very attentive. Thank you very much. Now, how much load based on this ex example, if they want to do a non-destructive testing, they should apply. Okay. Okay. I'm glad that we have a lot of replies. Thank you very much for that. The next question is how much time shall you maintain the load on the anchor? Is it 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds? Okay, we have a reply, one kilonewton should be the load, 0.35 kilonewtons up to two kilonewton. Okay, and the reply for the time is 20 seconds, one minute, 60 seconds. Okay, so a lot of replies. So thank you very much for the active participation. Let's see what are the right answers. So the number of anchors to be tested, as you rightly said, all of you rightly said, five to 15 numbers. And our load requirement was 0.2 kilonewton, and we are using a nylon anchor. So the V test was five. We would maintain the load, as most of you rightly said, to one minute or 60 seconds at least. And then based on this simple formula, we know that we need to be testing till one kilonewton for a non-destructive method. Okay. I hope this is very clear and we would, cons uh, we would go to the last session, which is what is the test procedure you need to do if you want to validate your installation quality or you want to prove your workmanship. So there's obviously a code in DS for this as well. There are actually two clauses. One, one thing, the first point is, what are the actions? What are the load you need to consider? Second thing is, you don't just do test running around the site in random way. There should be a record form and you need to record all your test results. Now, also, we need to discuss with the responsible uh, person at site, could be consultant or the project manager, on what shall be the consequences if you determine that there is a problem. If all the anchors pass the test, no problem. You are happy, everyone is happy, but God forbid, some anchor was not installed properly. 
then what shall we do? We should have a joint discussion at site with the manufacturer, with the consultant, project manager, and then we should evaluate the condition. One possible solution could be double the number of tested fasteners. So if you test it 20, make it 40. If more than one anchor fails, now this gets heated up really big. If more than one anchor fails, then we know that really there is a problem at site. And hence the code says all fasteners have to be tested. So from this, not only it says that you need to uh, have, this is the procedure for you to check the installation quality, but it also warns you that installation quality is most importantly, most important, otherwise you, you might end up testing all your fasteners, which takes a lot of time and uh, cost. Also, the specification has to be reconsidered. The normal uh, standard as per BS is you must test 2.5% of all anchors installed and a minimum of three should be tested. So even if you are installing, uh, let's say five anchors, 2.5 or five is less than three, but still you must test at least three pieces. You must test 1.5 times of your required load. So if you have let me remind you of the same example of Chandelier. If you need one kilonewton from an anchor, you must test the anchor up to 1.5 kilonewtons. You have another option. You need to test 5% of all the anchors, minimum three pieces, and you need to test only up to 1.25 of the required load. So you need instead of same example, instead of 1.5 kN, you will end up testing 1.25 kN, but you are effectively testing double the number of anchors. So this is a conscious uh, decision you have to make based on uh, site condition, cost, time, etc. So it's fairly simple compared to determining the capacity. You have to test the anchors minimum. My recommendation is always stick to the minimum 2.5%. If there is a failure, then we evaluate from there. And the second thing is also in this procedure, you need to maintain the load for one minute. So you should not release the load before one minute. This is also very important. Now, why should you consider Fisher? as an anchor manufacturer or somebody who is as a partner with you at site. The prime reason is Fisher don't sell products. We focus to offer services to our customers. So number one is trainings, webinars, presentations, CPD trainings, etc., which we do. Pull out test, we, all, we can also partner with you and we can contact pull out test and recommend resistances or we can also prove that uh, your selection was right we can also support you with design we can offer we offer software support if you don't have fisher software please uh, post it in the chat screen and our local representative would get back to you shortly document support we don't sell products like a trading company, it comes with all set of approvals, backup documents, calculations, and so forth. International technical support. Have you, uh, if you have any of the state-of-the-art projects in the region, which is not a typical one, and you have a very special requirement for anchors, we're more than happy to help you. We have a special technical team in Germany where we can partner with and offer custom solutions for your requirements. And last but not least are the project references. We are here in the market for more than uh, 12 years and we can, all, of course, support you with project references, prestigious projects around the world. What else we do? Now, this is my last question. I will show you a picture. I want you to guess what it is. It is an anchor test, but have you seen 
something like this. Okay. Okay. This is the outcome of the test. Anything strikes? I'm proud to say that we are one of the very few companies in the region working in the anchor industry who are who who can do a sheer test. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, I'm really happy seeing your reply. So uh, I, I guess you are really experienced in anchor testing, and now you can prove what is the result. You can also evaluate your results. I am sure remain, all of you who attended also have the same experience. This is a shear test. If you require a shear test for any of your projects, please contact Fisher representative. And I promise you would not find much players in the market who can offer or support you with shear testing. That brings me to the final session, which is questions. Now it's time that I answer all your questions. I try my level best to answer to the best of my knowledge. Now, if you wonder that you want to have a copy of the webinar, it will be uploaded through YouTube and website. If you want to see the presentation, also we can share it to you, or you can contact your official representative locally in your countries, and they'll be happy to assist you. Okay, another happy moment. I started the webinar with around 59 people and now we have 72. So that's really a good, good crowd. The first question. Okay, the first question. Kindly provide us the wonderful presentation material by Mr. Mohammed. For sure, Mr. Mohammed, you would have it from our staff. The second question is from Kusema. We may have to leave early. Pre okay, definitely, Mr. Kosema, we understand that you have a busy schedule. We would definitely share the link and the presentation material. Engineer Mohammed Labib, Mr. Parvez, also, we would share the uh, presentation with you. Engineer Mohammed uh, Labib, do Fisher have pull out machine or not? We need it in our project Mecca for string, Saudi. Okay, Fisher, we. We have pull out machines. We can also sell it to you, or we can also provide you contacts of pull out machine manufacturers where you can contact them directly and you can buy the machines. Both these options are available. If you if you want us to support you with the machines, we can also definitely support you. In our project. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mohammed Labib. In our project, suppose we have 100 anchor bolts, need to test angle support system. Uh, I'm just trying to maximize your question. Okay, in our project, I think I can read. Uh, I, we have 100 anchor bolts, need to install in hanging support system. Should we check all or 5 to 15? Now, this brings uh, this lets me ask you another question. What is the purpose you need to do the test? Is it to prove the workmanship or you want to find how much the anchor can carry? If the anchor is ETA approved, then you don't need to do a pull out test to prove how much it can carry. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Lebib. Le uh, Sure, I can also give you my contact details and we can we can have a one-on-one -on -one chat. There's a question from Mr. Izar. I would like to ask two questions related to pull-out testing. The dial gauge on our pull-out machine shows the value in pressure. How would we convert this into load value? In pull-out testing for rebar, what assembly do we recommend to grip the rebar? Okay. Now the first question is, you might be using a pneumatic pump-based system, which normally have values in pressure. It depends on the uh, manufacturer of the, uh, of the apparatus. It depends on the piston diameter. 
but normally there is there is a schedule which converts pressure to kilonewton so pressure is forced by area so we need to know the area of the piston which is used in this pull out machine but mr uh, is there maybe we are using the same pull out machines if you can share with us the details after the webinar we can definitely see if this is similar machine then we should, we can we can share the details what we have in pull out testing for reba what assembly do you recommend to grip the reba now rebar as you said is not similar to a threaded rod so we need to have something called wedges we uh, have an assembly of three wedges which is connected to the rebar and a cylinder we would definitely share you the data sheets of this equipment and the uh, supplier details so you can definitely definitely contact them umair ahmed has got a very valid question load as per design calculation based on your software depending on non concrete failure load as per design okay i assume that you uh, want to ask us a question that our design software when it does a calculation does it consider concrete failure or no now our software is calculating as per reputed codes bs um, eta and aci standards which obviously considers all the failure modes including concrete code failure so if you have a result from our software then you are 100% good to go it considers all the failures which might possibly occur at your site condition in concrete the next question in option 02 change to 1.25 please okay uh, this is by uh, joji sara philip we will uh, definitely go back uh, we will we would try to answer this towards the end or after this uh, presentation let me mr haroon sayed are there any specific special consideration for testing anchors installed outdoors as compared to indoor anchors mr haroon very interesting question uh, anchors are tested based on if you remember to my initial slide it is it has to have a purpose why you need to do the test what kind of anchors are you using chemical mechanical or nylon it uh, the number of test or the test procedure is not depends on if you are using gi a4 or hot tip galvanized let's say it purely is depending on the application or the purpose so there is no specific requirement for indoor and outdoor both of them would be the same procedure there's two more questions mr sadiq mohammed does this test method comply the requirements for standard ab abd 5234 uh, uh i am not sure unfortunately what the standard states uh if we, we will definitely contact you uh, after the webinar and we would answer you in detail if you understand the right uh, right standard then definitely we can say if it is complying or not complying haider rahman has a question is increased number of tests depends on type of failure or not no unfortunately the number of test is based on uh, if you want to test the workmanship let's say it's based on did you see a failure if you see a failure then you have to do more number of test or uh, you can test it till 1.25 times uh, as per my uh, slides for testing installation for 2.5 percentage of all the anchors or you can test 5% of all the anchors for a load of 1.25 oh okay sadiq mohammed uh, bs5234 part 2 a uh, very interesting question but unfortunately to be honest i don't know what exactly are the requirements of bs5234 i am not well versed in this standard but definitely give us some time we will come back to you and we would surely have you 
have your question replied. Once again, thank you very much for the active participation. It's time to end the session. And let me uh, let me tell you this, that uh, this is one of the most interactive uh, webinars we have had. A lot of questions. And all of you try to uh, post your questions on the question tab. I would say this is a very disciplined uh, crowd we have. And looking forward to hear from you more. And last, before, last thing before you go, your feedback is very important to us. So please make sure that give us your suggestions on the polls tab right next to the questions tab because we would definitely like to hear from you and we would value your feedback and we would improve our webinar next time till we meet. Bye. Thank you.